Hello everyone and welcome back to Garage Science. I've gotten a number of comments and messages about copper plating steel and iron parts. I want to take a few minutes to explain why copper plating these materials is more complicated than many other metals. I'll explain the science and give some experimental examples. Let's get started. The relative locations of two metals in the reactivity series plays heavily into whether a single displacement reaction will take place. A single displacement reaction occurs like this. Essentially two compounds, usually a compound in solid form and another in aqueous form, swap places. A solution of copper plating electrolyte for acid copper plating contains copper sulfate, which provides the aqueous form of copper for the copper plating process. And if a steel part is submerged in a solution like this, it becomes the solid material iron in the reaction. The copper will then obtain two electrons from one of the iron atoms, and the copper will become the solid form of copper and deposit on the surface of the iron. And the iron atom that gave up its electrons will go into solution as an iron cation. The reactivity series of metals is shown here. You can see the location of iron with the symbol Fe here, and the location of copper, or Cu, here. Now because iron has a higher position in the reactivity series than copper, the following single displacement reaction will occur. Experimentally testing this is easy. All you need is some copper sulfate, most easily obtained through a product like root killer, and a jar of water. We'll be testing iron, nickel, and a zinc plated lag screw. Start by mixing the copper sulfate in water until fully dissolved. The resulting color should be light to dark blue. Next, take an iron or steel rod and slowly insert the rod into the solution and then remove it slowly. You'll notice that the iron now has a sparkly copper appearance due to the deposition of copper on the surface through the displacement reaction. It's important to realize that this is not copper plating. There is merely a coating of precipitated copper on the surface of the iron. Unfortunately, since copper isn't actually adhered to the surface, it is easily wiped off. This is why copper plating cannot be done directly to iron components. The nearly instant displacement reaction prevents any kind of adhesion during copper plating. The solution to this problem is that for copper plating iron components, a thin coating of another metal is required first, usually tin or nickel. Tin and nickel are located on the reactivity series here with iron located here. Because tin and nickel have lower reactivities, they will tend to not react with a solution of copper. Here is a strip of nickel left in a copper sulfate solution for over two days. There is absolutely no reaction. While I was researching the chemistry for this video, I found several sources that said the same displacement reaction that occurs for iron should occur for nickel, and I even found a couple of photos claiming the same, but based off my own experiments, it doesn't. The general rule for metals being higher in the reactivity series seems to be an exception for copper and nickel which kind of makes sense when you look at their location in the periodic table compared to iron. Since nickel and copper are right next to each other, they have very similar electronegativities and therefore are not very reactive with each other. Now I have had people ask, and I have had the understanding that zinc is a suitable intermediate plating metal, and that is very, very wrong. Zinc is actually higher than iron in the reactivity series and experiences the same displacement reaction that can be seen on this zinc plated lag screw. Well, that's all I got. There will be more copper plating and some nickel plating videos coming this year, so be sure to subscribe and make sure you like and share with your friends. Also, leave me some feedback in the comments whether you liked the video or not, or if you just have unanswered questions. I put some helpful links in the video description. Thanks for watching.